Hey, what is going on, guys? So I am back, and today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Episode Nine and what could possibly happen after it. Now, this is all down to idle speculation at the moment and rumours, but I think the natural step that Lucasfilm can take would be to introduce the Old Republic characters to a wider audience. Because, of course, we have those people who've never played the Old Republic video game, so they don't know what it's all about, and they don't know what, what, what all of the characters do, and how they're involved with everything. I mean, honestly, I thought it was a massive piss take when they made the Old Republic non-canon. Because if anything deserves to be canon, then it's the Old Republic. I mean... It's just ridiculous. It's got to the point now where this whole Republic video game is actually better than the sequel trilogy of, of, of films. It's it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, that shouldn't be the case. Like, the films should always be the best thing. And that's not happening at the moment. Like, I said I wanted Darth Malgus to come back, yes. But not in the bloody game. I wanted him to come to come back in the films because he hasn't been in the films yet. And we've already seen him in, in the Old Republic game. I mean, ugh, it's just so stupid. Like, it could be a perfect opportunity to make Darth Malgus canon, couldn't it? Like, even in the most recent um, downloadable content of Star Wars The Old Republic, it's called Jedi Under Siege, um... Darth Malgus awakens from some sort of hibernation. It seems like he was in some sort of stasis chamber. Now, I swear I did a tweet a few months back that, that said something about a stasis chamber. So, um, I reckon they've nicked my idea. Disney, Disney and Lucasfilm have nicked my idea there. Um... I can't be bothered to find the tweet because it was months ago now that I tweeted that. But obviously it would have taken them a while to develop this content before uh, the downloadable content actually came online for people to play. Of course, there is my novel that was published by Olympia Publishers. It's called The Story of Wittenborough, and it's still available on Amazon and eBay. Now, in my novel, I have a villain called the Supreme Leader. And what do you know? When I watch Star Wars The Force Awakens, there's a character called Supreme Leader Snoke. So, what the hell? Like, did Disney and Lucasfilm, like, nick my idea there as well? Like, what's going on there? Or did they just, like, was their inspiration Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un? I mean... <laughs> So then what's bloody going on? Look, I've said this many times. I've said it to people online, and I've said it to people face to face. This sequel trilogy of Star Wars is bordering on rubbish. Like, I'm a massive fan of the prequels and the originals. But this sequel trilogy is just doing my head in. Like, like I still watch it, but, but it's just, like, cringy at times. So, J.J. was trying to make prequel haters happy by bringing out The Force Awakens. But I think, in the end, he just made the prequel haters more angry. Because he killed off Han Solo. And then Ryan Johnson killed off Luke, so that made the fans even more angry. I mean, look... Prequel haters are not proper Star Wars fans in my books. I'm a proper Star Wars fan because I love the originals, I love the prequels, and I love the Old Republic. So, is episode 10 going to happen after episode 9? Well, only time will tell, but the point is... Is there going to be some sort of time jump or time travel involved? Are they going to make the hyperspace beacons related to time travel somehow? I do not 
foggiest. No, I don't have the foggiest at the moment. But, basically, how can I put this? Why doesn't Ray just travel back to the Old Republic era? Like, using time travel. Like, why can't Luke's Force Ghost just complete her training and then she becomes more powerful than any Jedi before her and then she somehow masters the ability to time travel. I think that would be a really good idea, to be honest, about where to take this whole thing. And then then they could effectively call episode 10 the Old Republic and it would make sense. Even though we know the events of the Old Republic happens before the events of the Phantom Menace. But if you add time travel into the equation, it doesn't matter about stuff like that. So, <clears throat> basically, people who still haven't played the Old Republic, that includes Knights of the Old Republic, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and the Old Republic, I urge you massively to play these games because they are more worth your time than The Last Jedi, believe me. I'm not just saying that, I'm being brutally honest. Like, I mean, look, I, I respect people massively who travel around the world and they go on holidays and whatnot. But when you have people who are just sat at home watching Towie, Made in Chelsea, Geordie Shaw, Kim Kardashian nonsense, whatever the fuck you want to call that, um, that does my head in, though. Like, you could be putting your time and effort into something creative, or you could be playing The Old Republic. A story-driven, immersive experience. Like, how can I possibly sell it to you better than that? I mean, why are some people so dumb that they would rather play Candy Crush on their tablets and phones rather than play Star Wars The Old Republic? It makes no fucking sense, I'm sorry. But, you know, like... Is it because you need more than one brain cell to play the Old Republic? Oh, for God's sake. Anyway, moving on, before I lose my friggin' rag. We've got the Mandalorian thing coming out, the TV series. That's probably going to be on the Disney streaming service. And I believe that's written by Jon Favreau, who plays Happy Hogan in the Marvel films. Um, So what else have we got? We've got the Game of Thrones writers thing. Um, hopefully that is going to be the Old Republic. Because the Old Republic is essentially the medieval version of Star Wars. And we all know how popular Game of Thrones is. And that was to do with medieval stuff. So, the Game of Thrones writers successfully made Game of Thrones a massive hit. Um, the TV, <coughs> the TV writers, that is. But of course, we have to credit George R. R. Martin, the guy who wrote the novels. So if they successfully made Game of Thrones a massive hit, then Logically, you would think they would be able to make Star Wars The Old Republic a massive hit, wouldn't you? Whether it be movies, a TV show, whatever. I mean, I I honestly, like, would prefer them to go the movie route because then more people will watch it. But, on the other hand, if you had a TV show, there would be more time to develop the characters. I mean, we don't want a, another rushed, botched job like The Last Jedi. 
So, for those of you who don't know already, Kerry Russell has been cast in Star Wars Episode Nine, And I am a massive fan of her. I think she's an incredible actress. She's absolutely beautiful, of course. She was in The Americans, the FX show. Absolutely phenomenal show. I really recommend you watch it. It's more worth your time than The Last Jedi, believe me. <laughs> I mean, I think most things are worth your time more than The Last Jedi. <laughs> uh, except, like, those things that I mentioned just a minute ago, like Towie and all of that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, that Arge guy in Towie, he's thick as shit. Whereas here, you have this very intelligent actress, Carrie Russell. So let's talk about her, shall we? Got the, this article here from the Mirror. It says, Star Wars 9, nine spoilers. Carrie Russell revealed as one of the Knights of Ren? Question mark. I mean, I thought... I thought the rumour was that she was going to be playing Mara Jade. Or at least a character called Mara. Unless Mara Jade is actually a a Knight of Ren. I, I, I don't know what the fuck's going on, to be honest. When you have a phenomenal actress like Carrie Russell, you need to have her in multiple films. She can't be just killed off in episode 9, because that would be a waste of a character. Unless you're going to do, like, some sort of prequel. Or, like, like they're doing with fucking Cassie and Andor. <laughs> so, here we have Matthew Reese, Of course, married to Cass Kerry Russell in real life. Um, also, they played Philip and Elizabeth Jennings on the American TV show. So, they were married in the TV show, and they're married in real life. I mean, remember, for those of you who have watched the Americans TV show, you will know that Philip and Elizabeth Jennings are Russian spies, KGB spies. Now, it makes me think, Matthew Reese would be perfect for Star Wars, he could play an Imperial spy or something of that nature, or an Imperial agent. As long as JJ or Ron Howard gets to write his character, not friggin' Ryan Johnson, because he'll ruin... He'll just ruin everything. He's already ruined so much, don't let him ruin anything else. So, that is my rant done for today. Tell me what you think in the comments if you want. And even like and subscribe if you want. <laughs>